accepted you. Your source is stolen. We found in 1 through 14. For the sake of our subject, Ezekiel has been grabbed and is being guided by God. He is being guided by God through a vision. You look at verse 1, it says, And the Lord came upon me and brought me out in a vision. This is a vision that Ezekiel is seeing. What he is showing, what God is showing Ezekiel, is that while Israel is in Babylonian exile, they're away from home, they feel cut off from their family, cut off from their people, cut off from their God. He's showing them that the people of Israel are spiritually dead. When you see this valley of dry bones, you would assume that there is a physical death. But because this is a vision that Ezekiel is seeing, God is showing Ezekiel that he knows that Israel is spiritually dead. There's a difference between being physically dead and spiritually dead. When you are physically dead, your soul is separated from your body. But when you are spiritually dead, your soul is separated from God. And many of us are physically alive in the sanctuary. But many of us are still spiritually dead. Have you ever been in a place in your life where you felt hopeless and felt helpless? Like the children of Israel, they said we are hopeless. Our bones are dry. We are hopeless. Our hope has perished. And we feel cut off. We are cut off. And sometimes in life, you are going to feel like God is nowhere around you. Sometimes in life, and maybe even this day right now, that you feel that God has abandoned you. It's one thing to be abandoned by people. That feels a certain way. But to feel abandoned by God, that feels a whole nother. You can be in a room full of people and still feel by yourself. You, you, you can have all the friends, you can have all of the money, you can have all the stuff that you want and still feel like God is nowhere around. Yeah, yeah. These people, Israel, had feel, they felt that God was not there. And, 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 and can I just play devil's advocate just for a few moments? Could, could they have been right? That God allowed them to be taken captive. God allowed them to be uh, a torture. God allowed them to be in pain and in trouble. God didn't allow them to go to church anymore. God didn't allow. God allowed this Babylonian tyranny to take over their life through Nebuchadnezzar. Could it just be that God is not present in their lives? Sometimes in our life we can get so 
so distraught, so, so, so in our own feelings and own, in our own emotions that we don't even feel when God is moving. Mm -hmm. At times in our life where we're so down and so depressed that, that, that we don't even know that God is working with us and God is working for us. Israel is in a place where they are in Babylonian captivity under the hegemony of Nebuchadnezzar, but yet still God is with them. Stop by this morning to let you know, even though you're in pain, even though you're struggling, even though you're going through hardships, God is still working it out in your favor. It may not look like it's being worked out, but trust and believe if you woke up blinking this morning, if you woke up breathing this morning, God is still working a miracle in your life. The money might not be in the bank, but the miracle is on the way. The feelings might not be in your body, but the miracle is on the way. The friends that you want that around, that, that you want around are not there, but the miracle is on the way. God is working it out for your good. At times we feel that God has abandoned us, but if you are blinking and breathing, that's a sure sign that God is still working for you. He's got a plan in mind. It may not feel good. It may not be what you like. It may not be what you want. But trust and believe you will want what God has for you when he comes to oh, you. God, God, God sees and understands that Israel, Israel is spiritually dead. Somebody say spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. They, they feel abandoned. They, they feel left alone. They feel like God, God's not in their corner anymore. Have you felt that way before? Just, you don't have to raise your hand. But, but just, just, just take an inventory of your life. And, 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 ever, and if you've ever felt like God has, hasn't worked it for you in a situation or, or isn't with you in a plan, it, 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 the plans that you, that you wanted didn't work or the things that you, if you ever felt like God has abandoned you, yes. Israel feels this way. There in that death, that spiritual death, God does something that is so amazing. God raises a voice with a vision. He grabs Ezekiel and takes Ezekiel along this valley of dry bones. When he takes him along this valley of dry bones, he shows Ezekiel just what Israel is going through. I feel sorry for Ezekiel. Because it's already hard preaching to folk that's loud that's looking at you and ain't saying nothing. <laughs> but it's one thing to have to preach to a graveyard. But God is willing to raise a voice with a vision in your life. When God sees that you are spiritually dead, God will raise a voice in your life that has his vision in their mouth. God will raise a voice of victory in your life. Yes. Have you ever been in a place where you just needed some encouragement and all of a sudden you found it through somebody? Maybe it had been in a Facebook post or on a tweet or, or somebody at work just happened to say something to you. But if, when you find yourself spiritually dead, God will raise a voice with a vision to tell you everything is going to be all right. And maybe that voice wasn't nowhere, but the voice is right here through this microphone. Can you hear me? I came to tell you that everything is going to be all right. Your, your marriage is going to be fine. Your job situation is going to be fine. Your relationships are going to be fine. Your, your money is going to be fine. Your mama's going to be fine. Your, your daddy's going to be fine. Your, your boo's going to be fine. Everything's going to be just all right because God has raised a voice with a vision. And I want you to tell somebody everything is going to be fine. Everything. Hallelujah. Spiritually dead. Proof that there is spiritual death is found in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God tells Adam, He says, You can eat anything you want in the garden of any tree except from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because when you eat from that tree, you will surely die. Yeah. Bible goes on to say, the story says that they ate from that tree. Both Adam and Eve ate from that tree. But they did not 
physically died. Y'all know the story, right? They spiritually died, which means they were separated from God. You can further read and know that they were separated from God because when God showed up in the garden, they hid from God. You only hide from God when you're separated from God. You hide the stuff you don't want God to see. You try to do stuff in the dark so God can't see it because you're spiritually dead. I didn't mean to miss you. I'm missing my sermon this morning. It's the stuff you try to hide from God that kills you. They're in the garden and they're trying to hide from God because now they're spiritually dead. Paul says it in Ephesians as well. He said, you, he made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sin. That's Ephesians chapter 2. He, and, and, and the understanding is, is that there comes a time in our life where we are spiritually dead. Don't have no motivation to move. Don't have no oomph to go. Don't have no desire to do anything. Anybody ever been spiritually dead before? What I like about God is that God here poses a question. God asked Ezekiel a question in verse 3. He says, more man can these bones live? God showed up asked some hard questions. But here's what God is doing, beloved. I believe God, God, God is trying to make sure that he identifies our limits so that we can highlight, so he can highlight his limitlessness. Here's what he's doing. God says, more man, man who can do but so much, can these bones live, this thing that's out of your reach. And at times in our life, God wants to ask us hard questions so we can get a great response to know where we end, but where God begins. It is not until we come to the end of ourselves when we can experience God. The problem with us too much is we feel in ourselves too much. You think your stuff don't stink? You think you're the best thing since sliced bread? You think you're the last Coca-Cola in the world? You think you everything out of You think you're a bag of chips and a Pepsi-Cola? You think you're the stuff. And God can't use people who think they the stuff. It is not until you come to the end of yourself where you say, Lord, I yield, I yield. Lord, I can't go no further. I can't deal with this choke no more. I can't mess with this marriage no more. I can't mess with these children no more. It is when you come to the end of yourself that you can grab hold to God. Is there anybody here at the end of your rope and you want to take that and put a knot in it and hang yourself? What God says is at the end of your rope that you get at the beginning of his love. God simply says, I need you to know when you stop so you can know when I stop. Spiritually then. How do we become alive again? When we find ourselves in this spiritual disposition where we feel abandoned and separated from God in a place that God has placed us we do? What do we need? The first lesson that I think is important to understand how we can have life after death is number one, we need a word from God. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I need a word from God. I need a word from God. Notice this, notice this in verse four. In verse four, that God raises Ezekiel up. And God raises Ezekiel up, who was a prophet to the nation. He was called a prophet to the nation. And he's the voice with God's vision. Ezekiel's name means God is strong. So whenever Ezekiel is talking, you hear not only just what he is saying, but you understand that through his name, that God is strong. Not only is there a message in the message, but there is a message in the messenger. There's an understanding that not only is God's word in his mouth, but God's word is in his name. There's, some, there's something in the name. And, and, and God, shows, God shows Ezekiel these 
bones and he takes them around these bones and he, he carries them by these bones and he shows and Ezekiel himself even sees that the bones aren't dry but the bones are very dry but yet God says something to Ezekiel in verse 4 he says prophesy to the bones preach to the bones tell, tell them what I say to the bones. Don't you just know that when you find yourself in a spiritually dead situation that God will raise a voice with his vision but not only that he'll give you a word. Y'all ain't with me this morning. There are times in your life when you feel like the bottom has fallen out. You feel like you can sit on a nickel and swing your legs. You, you feel like nobody loves you. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to deal with you. But sooner or later, God will send something or somebody to let you know that he still has a word for your life. God says, I got a word for you. Any struggle that you're dealing with, I got a word for you. Any pain that you're dealing with, I got a word for you. Any hardship that you are going through, I got a word for you. And you don't need no liquor, you don't need no legs, you need the word of God. When you are going through some trouble, is there anybody here who will open up your word when you're falling in some trouble? Is there anybody here who will find this word and in your heart because if it wasn't for the word you wouldn't know which one you're it's, it's, it's what you need you don't need nothing that the world has to offer to fix your spiritual dead situation and many times and I say it all the time we try to fill a God hole with worldly things Nothing can resurrect a spiritually dead person that's in the world. The only thing that can raise the dead is the word of God. Come here, Jesus. Talk to me about what you did for Lazarus in Bethany. Bethany had a place with a place where Lazarus was dead. Martha was upset. Mary was upset. Everybody was upset. Jesus got word that Lazarus was dead and Lazarus lay there for four days. But yet when Jesus showed up on the scene, Mary said, don't go because the body stinks now. But the Lord says, open up the grave and loose him. When God shows up in your life, I don't care to be there for five I just need a word. When, when, when this word comes, this word does two things. This word, number one, it, it connects us. Notice there in verse 7, it says, and as he prophesied, as he was preaching, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bone, here it is, came together, bone to bone. When, 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 when there's a word from God, whether it's through a preacher or you reading the word for yourself, God will begin to connect some things in your life. The disconnect that you felt previous to the word will no longer be there anymore. Because the Bible says that when Ezekiel began to preach, the bones start coming together. And the reason why you're still disconnected is because you haven't gotten a word to connect you yet. I'm missing somebody. I figured somebody would run around for that one. Let me say it again because y'all missed it. Y'all was tweeting or something. And the reason why you're still disconnected is because you haven't gotten a word that connects you. Preacher somewhere else, but y'all ain't acting right. God says you don't need anything but my word to connect you. Watch this, watch this, watch this. It wasn't their power that connected them. Because bones don't move. Bones need muscles to move. And when you read the text, there's no muscles when Ezekiel starts to preach. So it wasn't by the might of Israel that they got together, but it was by the might of the word that they got together. Stop trying to fix the stuff for yourself. Stop trying to say, I'm going to get my life right. This 
come to Jesus. Bring your jacked up, tore up, beat up, messed up self up in here, up in here, up in here, and let the Lord work on you. You need a word. It's not until you get a word that it's going to start to connect. And you feel disjointed and disconnected and abandoned because you haven't got a word. Can I go further? Not only will this word connect us after we're spiritually dead, but this word, here it is, will cover us when we're spiritually dead. Look right here, verse 8, verse 8, verse 8 says, And look, and behold, sinews were on them, and flesh grew, and skin, here it is, Cover yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Let me go back. Let me go back to Genesis. Back to Genesis again. In Genesis, when 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 Adam and Eve were hiding from God, they they, they felt abandoned from God. They were spiritually dead. They were separated from God. But God found them. But and, and, and when God found them, He found out that they found out that they were missing. The scripture says that when they first got together, they were naked and not ashamed. But when they ate from the, when they were disobedient to God, ate from the wrong tree, they now have become shamed of what they've done. And what not only are they ashamed of what they've done, they're ashamed of what God has done. Because God is the one that created them and allowed them to walk around the way they are. But when God saw them, he saw them covered. But he saw them covered in an inadequate way. The reason why I know he saw them covered in an inadequate way because the Bible says that God covered them himself. And so when you feel abandoned from God, when you feel disconnected from God, you need a word from God that will connect you, but that word that connects you will also cover you. It'll keep you while you're still in your ignorant state. It'll keep you while you still don't know how you're gonna make it. It will keep you when you still don't when you still feel pain in your body. It will keep you when you still gotta take the medicine and you feel like you still won't leave. It's, it will keep anybody know about the keeping power of God? Has anybody ever been kept by the Lord? It is God's will that you be kept when you don't even know you've been kept. You ought to be able to praise God not for the stuff that you did. Blocked in your life. Tell somebody I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm covered. You don't need insurance with God because you got insurance with Him. Nationwide may be on your side, but it's better to have God on your side. And you are covered with God. When you get a word in your life, God connects you to the things and the ideologies that mean that he's in your life but also he covers watch this though they're connected they're covered but at the end of verse 8 it says but there was no breath in them church be careful because everything that's got activity doesn't have anointing. Everything that's has that has mobility doesn't have ability. Because the text says that they were connected, they were covered, but in verse 8, we at the end of it, it says, but there was no breath in there. What do you do when you don't have no breath? When you run out of breath. When you when you try and but 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 there's no breath left in you. You need another word. First first thing for life after death, you need you need you need a word from God. But secondly, you need a wind from God. W I N D. Watch this. God says to Ezekiel, "All right, part one of the sermon series is done. These people got what they needed in this season." They're covered, they're connected, they're, 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 they're moving. But there's no ministry. Because there's no breath in them. 
And God will send you a word you need when you need it. Amen. Because the first word you needed was the word that connected you. Yeah. The first word you needed was the word that will cover you. But the second word you need is going to animate you. Yeah. It's going to give you life like you've never had before. Yeah. It's going to give you mobility that you never had before. Before you got this second word, you could have moved on your own after you got the first word. But if you'd have stayed still long enough, yeah. you have got another word that would have said, preach to the wind. Yeah. Yeah. Prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind to come from everywhere. And not just breathe on them, but breathe in them. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody praising God for your second wind? Yeah. Anybody felt like giving up, but there's something inside you that wants to push you a little more? Anybody ever felt like throwing in the towel, but there's something inside you pushing you a little more? Anybody ever felt like calling it quits, but there's something inside of you uh, pushing you a little more? All I know is that I, I feel it today. All I know is that every now and then I get beside myself and I want to throw in the towel and quit. But there's something on the inside of me that tells me don't quit. George, just stay on in there. And the wind that God's going to send in your life is going to tell you, just hang on in there. I'll be with you in your low times. Hang on in there. I'll roll with you in your bad times. Hang on in there. I'll hang on with you. If you hang on with me, I'll hang on with you. Is there anybody here that knows the Lord will hang with you? He'll give you a second wind.
And when I grab them, I'm going to guide them to a place of promise. And so even though you have been spiritually dead, we've done your, your funeral, we, we, we preach, we shout it, we, we got your repast done. You look real nice. A.A. A. Grid, A.A. A. Grid, did you real well? God says, I'm going to reach into your grave. Grab you that is spiritually dead. And carry you from your place of death to a place of promise. God will reach into our spiritual graves and deliver us from spiritual death. And the question I have for you today is, won't God wake you up? Yes. Won't God reach into your life? Yes. He has, God has the uncanny ability to reach into our life when, when life seems to be over for us. And grabbing us at the right time. He says, I'll let you go but so far, but I'll grab you and bring you back. He said, the, and what does him right say? He'll, he'll, he'll reach down if he has to reach way down. And I don't know about you, but the Lord had to reach way down for me. And there have been some times in my life when I've been so spiritually dead that I wanted to stay there. Didn't want to be resurrected. There were some times in my life where I was so spiritually dead. I didn't want no friends. I didn't want no family. I didn't want no loved ones. I didn't even want God. Can I just be real with you? There were just some times in my life where I said, Lord, I don't know why you need me because I'm all jacked up, messed up, and tore up. But then he reached his hand down to me and pulled me up. And I just stopped by this morning and said, I thank God for waking me up this morning. It was the alarm clock that went off in Calvary. It was the alarm clock that sounded in Calvary. It was the tones and the bell that sounded in Calvary that woke me up this morning. It wasn't my iPhone that woke me up, but it was the bell and alarm that was in Calvary. Y'all know what happened in Calvary, don't you? Over 2,000 years ago, there was a man named Jesus. He had an alarm clock on his back. It was he put a nail, he put a nail in his left hand. Feet. And every time they hit that bell, a bell rung to wake me 